Rawl. Tear. Soul. Tall. Oh no. What is up, Sanctuary? I know that many of you, including myself, have had that painful, agonizing moment that you just experienced up on screen where you were rushing a rune where you really thought you had the order down and you just unfortunately misfired and you bricked a very critical rune word. And typically what you do to avoid that is you have a tab open, you go into Discord, you trip or check yourselves even on the simplest of leveling rune words just to make sure that you get it right on the second or third time going forward into future seasons and rune word rolls. But fortunately, I'm excited to unveil a new data mod quality of life tool and feature called Ancient Grimoire brought to life by my partner in crime, Shadow, which eliminates the need for you to do that. Upon the proper implementation, which I'm going to showcase uh, momentarily, you are going to press escape and you are going to see a new parent module pop up called Ancient Grimoire. You are going to see that there is a modular fashion here, things like leveling rune words, end game rune words, rune list, cube recipes, so on and so forth. Now, one thing to call out is that this is a scrolling functionality. There is not a search widget actually implemented in the game of Diablo 2 Resurrected, so there was no way uh, to actually implement that. But what you're going to see here throughout all of these tabs is he effectively implemented it by using the most uh, commonly used rune words and or crafting recipes. So those are kind of listed at the top. But the form and function of this definitely looks like Ariat Summit. For many of those are used to it. So you can see here with the spirit example, the runes are color coded. You can see the affixes that are weapons only versus shields only, assuming that you can roll a rune word in multiple items. There is insight, rhyme, treachery, smoke, so on and so forth. And then as we navigate over to the rune words, we have things like call to arms and enigma. Mosaic is called out here, and you can see that this was implemented in patch 2.6. Or, for example, with Infinity in 2.4, it was finally able to be made uh, in spears beyond the polearm. So, a lot of great customization, a lot of transparent callouts. One of my favorite features of this is the rune upgrading list because so often we all forget to pick up the crucial gems that we need to actually upgrade our runes into the cube recipe. It's very neatly color coded, great quality of life, easy on the eyes, and easy to identify. Identify. He has things like cube standard recipes. I love this call out here on the socket formula. You can see here that he actually implemented the mathematical equation. So therefore, if you are curious and you know that the item has a certain max sockets, you can input it and it is going to tell you the actual physical percent chance that you have to roll those items. And there's just, again, a ton of information. Everything that you could possibly want to find and use is available in here. And finally, closing us out is just the commonly crafted uh, cube recipes, things like caster amulets, where you have a magic amulet, a raw amulet, Amethyst and a jewel. It shows the different affixes and uh, pretty much everything you need. So again, thank you, Shadow, for bringing this to life. This is an amazing feature. I have been power using this on my offline Grail Sork, and I'm excited to test using this on BNet getting into season five. Now that we've showcased Ancient Grimoire in the wild, let's talk about where to access it and how to properly install it. What you see up here on screen is a GitHub hosted by my partner Shadow, but the first thing that both of us wanted to call out here at the top is the disclaimer, of course, around the use of mods. What I explicitly first want to say is if you are generally a paranoid individual, then I would not recommend that you use this outside of single player. I will show you in a bit how you can easily toggle this off if you want to actually go online without the risk here. But at the end of the day, uh, Blizzard and BNet has not necessarily explicitly endorsed the use of these types of mods. However, there is one thing that I actually want to showcase up on screen. Back in March 2021, after the BlizzCon reveal, PC Games Mag had an interview with Chris Lana, the lead producer of Diablo 2 Resurrected. And during this reveal, there was a question that was stated, you revealed that Resurrected is getting modding support. Can you tell us a bit more about what this entails? And as you can see up on screen, the response from Chris was, one of the things that has kept Diablo 2 alive is the modding community. So we appreciate all the work they have put into the game over the years. I think we can split this into two separate categories. There have been mods in the past that injected code straight into the game, and those are the kind of things that we cannot support. But all the other mods, you know, the ones that use data and that sort of thing, we love to see those. 
As we've gone through the game, we've switched a lot of things that used to be hard coded into data. So when it comes to that data side of modding, there should be more things available and they'll be easier to access. Based on this interview and the explicit comment from Chris, I do think he is very much outwardly endorsing the data mod community, which is why they obviously made it more accessible in the game. Now, again, if you look at some of the Korean community, many of them have actually been doing this for quite some time. It has been known that many of them are doing data mod MPQs similar to Ancient Grimoire, where you have custom loot filters, among other creative quality of life implementations. So at the end of the day, it is, again, your personal comfort. But I do believe you will be very safe if you chose to use this on Battle.net in addition to offline, because this is not your formal injection of custom code that would be considered a botting or hacking exploit. Now, downloading and implementing this is very straightforward. Shadow does have a readme here. And if you transition down here in terms of how to install, I am going to walk you through a step by step example of how you can literally do this in under a minute. The first step you're going to do is first open your Battle.net launcher after downloading the file. You navigate over to D2R and you click the gear icon, selecting game settings. What you are going to see here is a checkbox called additional command line arguments. Some of you may already have this checked, but assuming that most of you don't, you are going to check this and drop in this exact text coming from the GitHub. Once this step is complete, you're going to open the folder listed under the install location via the Windows Explorer. Upon navigating to your game file, you are first going to create a new folder called mods. Once this folder has been created, you are going to pull over the download file. You are going to extract this into the exact folder here and your path being Diablo 2 Resurrected and the mods folder. Upon completing this extraction process and navigating back, you will see now that the mod folders are here and Ancient Gwimmar is installed and you are ready to rock and roll. Well, Nephilim, do you love quality of life? Because I certainly do. And we owe Shadow a huge thank you and shout out for creating this and bringing this awesome data mod and tool to life. Now, if you guys have any feedback or future features that you want to see, please drop those in the comments below. While there's no guarantee we can get to everything, we are certainly happy to review these and see what can be brought to life. Stay frosty, Sanctuary.